Did you find the road maps, dear? Yeah, they were in your sewing drawer all the time. You going to get the car checked? I'm going to take it down right away. I'm sharp. I don't want to leave you behind, dear. But... Hi, Bill. Got a small jaunt coming up. I'd like to check the brakes and fill her up. Right. Grease job, too? Take care of it right away. Yeah. Uh, better change your oil, too, while you're at it. All right, sir. Oh, Joe. Care to wait in the office, Mr. Thompson? OK, if you don't mind. Joe, will you put Mr. Thompson's car up on the rack? Oil change, complete lube. Then bring her down, check the tires and the brakes. The light. Oil, lube, brakes, and light. Right. Right on. Something to read? Yeah. Say, Bill, what really does make a gasoline good? For instance, what's premium got over regular? Well, Mr. Thompson, there are lots of answers to that question. The whole story is right here. A good gasoline has to have eight basic qualities. It must start fast in any weather. It has to warm up fast. Give your engine full power quickly with economy. It must give you good getaway, quick acceleration. And a good gasoline should not cause vapor lock. This happens only when the gasoline changes into vapor too soon. The vapor gets into the fuel pump, and the fuel pump loses prime. Gasoline stops flowing to the engine. A good gasoline should never contribute to crankcase dilution. A good gasoline never forms gum. And a good gasoline should not cause knock. And that's what it takes to make a really good gasoline. How do the oil companies get all this into a gasoline? Well, gasoline comes from petroleum, crude oil. Now, as it comes from the ground, it is one of nature's most versatile materials. It's called crude oil because it is crude. It needs a lot of working over before its many end products are made. On the left there is a beaker of crude oil. On the right, some of our gasoline before we add the color. You can see the difference between this crude and our clear refined gasoline. When the crude burns, it gives off oily smoke. Imagine what that carbon would do to an engine. But our gasoline ignites instantly, burns clean and hot. Years of progressive research have produced gasoline qualities that make it a good fuel. By selective processing and by the addition of special chemicals, the refiner builds into the gasoline all the qualities that motorists demand. This gasoline has come a long way from the crude oil used to make it. But you're interested in how this became this. 
let's take the story step by step if you took some crude oil and put it under a tremendously powerful magnifying glass you'd see some things like this they're really so small gasoline and oil molecules that millions of them could sit easily on the head of a pin broken down into its parts it's possible to see that crude oil is made up essentially of two different kinds of atoms hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms when the hydrogen and carbon are joined as they are in petroleum they are called hydrocarbons crude oil is composed of hydrocarbons of literally thousands of different sizes and shapes just to make it easier to understand let's change the hydrocarbons into these characters and you'll note that some of the hydrocarbon molecules are small and light others are big and heavy the hydrocarbons that make up gasoline range from very small to medium but gasoline's largest hydrocarbon molecule is small compared to those in lube oil from the same crude the different sized hydrocarbons give different qualities and characteristics to gasoline and hydrocarbons of the same size have different personalities these long sad characters are knockers they can make an engine knock because they explode violently at the wrong time these husky cheerful chaps are good guys they don't cause knock because they burn evenly and together pulling their full weight in an engine without kicking about it the modern refining job is a process of picking out the right size hydrocarbons from the crude oil and then making sure that they are the good guys the ones that don't knock the refinery separates the bigs from the littles let's go back to the crude oil for a minute and see how it's done first the crude oil is heated and first of all the small hydrocarbons come off the refiner calls them light ends next the middleweight hydrocarbons come off and then the larger the heavier ends come off after gasoline's heaviest ends boil off the rest of the hydrocarbons in the crude oil come off all of these are too big for gasoline unless and until they get further treatment actually the crude oil is heated in giant stills to separate its components by molecular size and one of the parts is straight run gasoline but there isn't enough of the straight run gasoline to supply the demand and it has too many knockers in it you can see too that the percentage of gasoline is small compared with other products from the crude oil here's how some refiners lick that problem to increase our percentage of gasoline we take some of the very little hydrocarbons and make them into gasoline sized hydrocarbons and we take some of the hydrocarbons that are too large and make little ones out of the big ones this process is called cracking a process that makes the hydrocarbons not only smaller but makes them into good guys that don't knock cracking and other modern refining methods do a great job of getting more gasoline out of every barrel of crude more good gasoline and fewer of those knockers and things that tend to act up in today's high compression engines right right because those sourpuss knockers are bad actors in any gasoline they must be reformed if they're ever going to behave right in a good gasoline so that's what's done they're processed in reformers that changes their molecular structure they're changed from knockers into useful guys that don't knock such processes help improve gasoline quality but gasoline would cost you a lot more if we had to change all the knocker types into useful power producing characters Fortunately, there's another step in controlling the sad characters. Treatment with tetraethyl lead, TEL, we call it for short, has a splendid effect on the bad performers. When they get a correct dosage of TEL, they stop exploding at the wrong time and burn evenly along with the good guys. Tetraethyl lead controls the character of the hydrocarbons. The next step is to blend the various sized molecules into a gasoline balanced for efficient performance and economy in modern engines. 
good, fast starting in any weather calls for blending in the proper amount of light end molecules that vaporize instantly for quick starting even at low temperatures. Looking through our magnifying glass again, we can see that the light ends fly around and mix with the air, while the heavier hydrocarbons are sluggish, don't vaporize as quickly. The light ends are alert and ready to ignite the instant the spark hits. Fast warm-up quality calls for adding the right balance of middleweight molecules. These characters vaporize readily too. When the light ends burn, the middleweights wake up in a hurry and give off a lot of heat. And your engine warms up fast. Then the heavy ends come to life and are ready for action. Now, for good acceleration, the proper blend of light ends and middleweights gives, as we've noted, rapid vaporization, fast burning, quick power. And for good power and economy, add enough of the heavy ends and these large, powerful molecules add weight for a long push that makes for extra mileage. Moreover, the proper blend of the light ends overcomes the problem and the occasional headache of vapor lock. Another peek through the magic magnifying glass shows why, when the engine gets warm, the light ends may get too light-footed and boil, forming gasoline vapor. This vapor fills the fuel pump and since the fuel pump is designed for liquid, it can't work on vapor. So, the flow of gasoline to the engine is retarded. However, our balanced gasoline prevents vapor lock. Next improvement, prevention of crankcase dilution. Heavy ends must not be too heavy, or they may be slow to wake as the engine warms up. They may condense on cylinder walls and drain into the crankcase. There are no too heavy hydrocarbons in a good gasoline. Next, let's look at the cause of gum. As the gasoline hydrocarbons come out of the cracker, even some of the good guys have a weakness. A weakness for oxygen. And when they take on oxygen, they get gummy. This gum is what makes valves and carburetors stick. Before these fresh characters can acquire the oxygen habit, we give them a shot of a special chemical. This makes them dislike oxygen, as every good, strong-minded hydrocarbon should, and they just won't form gum. Now, how do we prevent knock? First, let's see what knock is. The spark ignites the hydrocarbons nearest the spark plug. As they burn, Heat and pressure get higher all over the combustion chamber. The hydrocarbons down there in the far corner get very hot. Then those sourpuss knockers lose control and explode even before the flame gets to them. And that's knock. This process, of course, is practically instantaneous. Knock is bad because it steals power and causes extra engine wear and tear. Knock interrupts the smooth power stroke. Knock hammers the pistons and puts a chattering strain on the connecting rods and the bearings. Not to say a chattering strain on the driver. Right. So a good gasoline saves not only your car, but your nerves and your pride as well. So to control knock, modern refining processes keep out as many as possible of those sourpuss knocker types. And small additions of TEL not only control the knockers that may be left, but make all the good hydrocarbons perform even better. The result for you and your engine, powerful, even burning. So advanced refining and blending processes actually build into our gasolines all the qualities that count. But even that's not the whole story. Good gasolines are blended to perform well in every climate and during each of the seasons. This is especially important in winter and summer. But it's important in the other seasons too. In cold weather, gasolines need more of the light ends that vaporize instantly for good starting. In hot weather, good gasolines are blended with fewer of the light ends to prevent vapor lock. 
and in this way are custom built for economy and driving satisfaction, best performance all the time and under all conditions. Right now, our regular gasoline is, of course, a wonderful product, actually better than premium gasolines were just a few years ago. And we find that it does an excellent power job in many cars. But for a really outstanding gasoline, you can't beat the premium grade. It commands a premium price because it always gives premium performance. And there are mighty good reasons for that. Our premium gasoline contains larger quantities of the more powerful, the more efficient hydrocarbons. Then too, processes such as reforming help improve the performance qualities of the hydrocarbons even further. And finally, tetraethyl lead, in just the right proportion, increases the anti-knock quality for peak performance. Naturally, these operations cost the refiner a lot of money, but every cent is a sound investment when you get these extra quality hydrocarbons in the premium gasoline, the really fine gasoline. You understand, though, that not all cars need the anti-knock qualities of premium gasoline for adequate satisfactory performance. But with premium grade, you're sure of the extra values that count most in driving satisfaction today. Quicker starting, faster warm-up, knock-free driving, and more miles to the gallon. So you see, you pay a little more, but you get more and better all-around engine performance and satisfaction. That's why more and more of our customers are using premium gasoline. Cars about ready, Mr. Thompson, just the gasoline to put in. Shall I fill her up with premium? Premium, right. <laughs> it's very interesting, Bill. A little bit over my head, maybe, but you sold me. Good. Have a good trip. I'm gonna have a great trip. How can I miss? Well, you might forget your laundry. Thanks for reminding.